I quit. I've just quit my job. And you're not going to believe what's happened today. True to artisan form, it's all been caught on camera. You're really not going to believe what's happened today. <laughs> I'll let it cut to it. Do you want anything? Hello guys, welcome back to Artisan Electrics. Today we've got a really interesting fault finding video for you. Corey and Max are on their way, but Corey's fashionably late today. It's 8.16 and uh, hopefully they'll be here in a couple of minutes. Time update, it's 25 past. All right, mate. Yeah, all right. I've been here in five minutes, literally. All right, see ya, bye. Probably should get going. Good morning, mate. You're yeah. right. Sorry for the delay. It, I'm like, I'm out of words. Like, I Why? just don't get it. Like, you're putting your belly before the company again. What were you doing at McDonald's, mate? Well, I was just getting breakfast. Like, I've told you, I'm sick of doing stuff for the company in my own time. Picking up materials, dropping off Reuben, picking up Luke's owls from the vets, all this stuff. This is company work. I'm burning my own energy at work. I think it's only fair that I eat breakfast on company time. And I think any other reasonable boss would would uh, would understand that and do you know what i'm sick of you your vans always smell like french cheeses your trousers are too tight and i've had enough um you can find yourself a new electrician never appreciated here never have been never will be if you need me i'll be with the cute baby cows i quit nah not really but i have actually quit that bit wasn't a joke that was serious um so I'm not going to explain it here, I'm going to explain it later on in the video, but today really is my last day at Artisan Electrics. So let me show you what happened on my last day here. I'm going to be a plus size model at ASOS. It's like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom in here. Right Corey, so I've got a present for you. That one actually reminds me of an ex-girlfriend. This is the last day, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> oh. Look at that smug face, honestly. On a serious note, guys, this is Corey's last day, and I thought for his last day, we'd book one of Corey's favorite jobs, which is solar and fault finding. So stay to the end of the video, because we will explain why Corey's really leaving, but let's get into the fault find can now. I, can I just say as well, by the way, skit aside, I was early and ready at work today, before Jordan and before Max. I was sitting in the car park waiting for them, thank you. It is true. So cool, look at those chickens. Look at all those chickens. Do you love chicken? Oh, there's piglets. Look at that pigeon as well. Oh my god. I think gosh. it's got animals galore here. So Corey has the privilege of working with me today. Here in this beautiful barn, up on the roof, we have a load of solar panels. The inverters are over here in the corner, so we'll show you that. One of them's got an error, and that's what we're trying to figure out today. Why has it got an error? What's the problem? Why is it not actually generating solar at the moment? Let's remove all the cobwebs. Oh, yeah. Oh, the size of them spiders in there. Ooh. And snails and all sorts. We need, we almost need the hoover in here, and then we could just hoover Well, we'll out. give them a service, give we'll, them the right good clean up. Exactly, yeah. Because that's actually, it's gonna derate it massively. It's though. like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom in here. Oh, look at that. Yeah, definitely need a hoover. So what do you reckon, Corey? First guess is, what could the problem be? It says, sync AC state 104. I would reckon if it's three phase, three single phase inverters, it's probably maybe they're trying to sync up to phases. 
I'm not sure. Possibly, yeah. Do you reckon it's trying to sync to, I don't know, say that one's L1, that one's L2, that one'd be help if it was labelled, wouldn't it? But Let's explain the setup a little bit here. So the customer's got three single phase inverters on a three phase supply, and they're connected to this three phase cable, which goes back to the main distribution board in the house. This one's not working, but the other two are. And Corey's just reading the instructions now to see what the problem might be. So it says mains frequency not within admissible range. So we're going to do a frequency test by connecting our test equipment, see what the frequency actually is, and see if it's off for some reason. All right, what have we got here? Very small wires, really. This is my old baby that I kindly gave to Corey because he got fed up with the Matrell. Got to stick that on eBay, actually. Someone else is garbage now. One man's trash. One man's treasure. I feel like I got swindled by David Savory on that one, to be honest. Raving about how brilliant the Matrell is. Let's see if I can remember how to how to use this. Yeah, there we go. 238 volts. So that's quite a high. Oops, sorry. High voltage. Let's go on the neutral. Exactly 50 hertz. 237 volts. Line to neutral. So voltage-wise and frequency-wise, we're within all the sort of norms. Question is, why is it saying there's a frequency error when there doesn't really appear to be a frequency error? So what we can do, I've just isolated the DC isolator and AC isolator to sort of just um, power, um, power it down and then power it up again. What do you call it? Power cycle it. So we'll turn the DC isolator back on now, see what that does. So that DC isolator is back on and it's still doing that sync state error. Should really be getting Corey to do the work today as it's his last day. I think it looks like you need me to, to be fair. It kind of, does it look like I'm completely incompetent? Incontinent? I wouldn't say that, but there is a certain smell around here. Hope Jordan knows I'm only ever going to be a phone call away when he you know, needs me for things like this. Sam Featherstone from Oval Renewables is such a great guy. Like He's always there at the end of the phone when we need to pick his brains about stuff you know and he's like such a fountain of knowledge about solar um, so he's just said a couple of things basically he said um, check the actual inside the actual inverter to make sure that there is power getting into it and then he's texting me the Fronius tech support line inverter fault is probably my guess but um, we want to try and eliminate all other possibilities before we just condemn the inverter because obviously if the, if the inverter needs to be replaced that's going to cost the customer quite a lot yeah so we've got 230 volts so there is definitely power coming through the ac isolator into this cable now we've got to check the connections in the inverter to make sure that the actual terminals are correctly um, correctly connected i'm losing my words today so we'll check that now Corey, get this cover off, will you? Yeah. I don't want to snap it off. Two thousand years later. There we go. It didn't break. Good. There you are. Thank you. Yeah. Turn the backlight so, on that. Yeah. Fifty hertz, two hundred and forty volts. Line to neutral, fifty hertz, two hundred and thirty-eight volts. Do you know how to read instructions, Corey? It depends, are they in Latvian? That's not really good. Uh, just take a speaking. Oh, hi Andy, it's Jordan here from Artisan Electrics. Um, I'm just uh, doing a bit of a fault finder on Fronius IG30 and I was wondering if you could help. So Fronius Technical Services have said the inverter is out of warranty. The warranty ended in 2017 and they think that it's a failed AC circuit board in the inverter, which basically means that the whole inverter needs to be replaced. That's what they've recommended. So they're gonna send me an email with a modern equivalent of this because they don't make this particular model anymore, but they're gonna send me an option for a suitable model. And then we can quote the customer for replacing the inverter, which is what we kind of thought it would be, but at least we've checked everything else to make sure that there's no other obvious issues. I've, I've had a little look inside and uh, there's nothing obviously burnt out or any major issues that I can see. So if they've said it needs a replacement, then that's the manufacturer saying it needs a replacement. However, what I'm wondering is whether it would be more efficient rather than having three single phase inverters. What you got to think is these were all manufactured the same day, installed the same day and under the same working conditions and similar working load. Um, if that's failed, the chances are it's very likely that that's going to fail and that's going to fail around a similar lifespan. Would it make more sense just to have one three-phase inverter 
firing the power back to the house rather than having three separate single phase ones and replacing them one at a time. Probably saved them some money there, so we'll work that out. So cute. Oh. That one actually reminds me of an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> that a ball at the back? Yeah, there's yeah. a ball at the back. No horns. It's called indestructible. Nice. Can I ride him? I'm joking. <laughs> you might not survive, but you could. I've done a mechanical ball. Reminds me of Corey, really, you know. Bull-headed. Can't make him do anything he doesn't want to do. Like fill out his timesheets. There's the ball. Oh, he's giving us evils. I think, Corey, me and you should get a selfie with a cow on your last day of work. Okay, go on. There it. Yeah, with we the need to. Let's get the little. Four beautiful piglets resting in a barn. It all looks so calm and tranquil, a little bit like a business that's running smoothly. And that takes us nicely to today's video sponsor, which is Tradeify. Tradeify is what helps us to be calm and tranquil as we do our work because everything is organized behind the scenes. Tradeify is a one-stop platform for tradespeople to manage their workflow, to stay organized and save time. So if you'd like to find out more about Tradeify, you can get 50% off for your first three months using the link in our description below. You know what this story is? It's like slightly different. Are you sure you trust him with that thing? This is the last day. What could possibly go wrong? Corey, Corey, do not take off there. <laughs> Insufficient storage. If I was you, I would walk over to where you want to film and then take it off. I'm so scared. A minute, let me just get it on. Hello, apparently it bites. Pretty Polly. <laughs> oh, that is loud. Oh my goodness. That is deafeningly loud. So this mains position is a complete hodgepodge and I wanted to show you guys this because we're gonna be looking at what the supply is going out to the outbuilding so that we can make sure everything's correct and safe at this end. Um, and you know, that we optimize the new system if we're swapping out the inverter to make sure it's the best possible solution for the customer. So you've got a three phase supply here, uh, probably 60 amp because the tails are actually only 16 millimeter squared. Interesting thing about this, this is an Imasun, right? You might recognize this. What does this look like? Let me know in the comments, guys, because um, this is basically a predecessor to something that we fit fairly often on the channel, but let me know in the comments. You've got these old rewirable fuse boxes. This is a very big farmhouse. So you've got a north wing, center section of the house, south wing. We will be recommending an EICR for the customer because obviously a lot of this electrical installation is quite aged. I can't see any evidence that it's been done recently. These two Henley blocks do the neutral and the three phases. As you can see, they're pretty full with all sorts of different size tails. Going down here, we go in to this consumer unit, which is the one that goes out to the barn that does the solar PV. Just a little note here, be careful of this, right? This actually is a very old porcelain fuse carrier and that little backing material there, which goes behind the fuse wire, is actually asbestos. We won't be touching that, but let's have a look at this consumer unit. So we've got quite a nice neat install here, which is good to see. The three phases and neutral come into this three phase RCD or RCCB, 80 amp, 30 milliamp. And then out of that, you've got this kind of three phase bus bar that goes across to the bottom of this circuit breaker. Now it's a 10 amp uh, circuit breaker type C. Out of that, you've got the three phases going into this AC isolator. You've got this armored cable, which looks like a 1.5 millimeter four core steel wire armored. And then that goes all the way out to the garage. It's quite a long run and I'm surprised really that they've got away with using such a small cable. The reason is that there is a uh, a reg about voltage drop in solar PV systems where you should have less than 1% volt drop and on a length like this it's probably 50 to 100 meters of cable going out there. I'd be very surprised with such a small cable if they've not got uh, a quite heavy amount of volt drop on this but we can do some calculations and figure that out. Two hours later Corey's still flying the drone. Where the heck has he gone? Watch carefully species goes about his work. Mm. 
nice. Yeah. I don't know if all my footage is even... Is it not on there? No. Devastating. That is the story of Corey's life. Can you see it? No, I saw it go in the tree. Oh no. Um, Can't believe I did that. No. Oh okay, I can see the picture on it at least. It's it's on the floor somewhere. Oh there it is, yeah, I can see it. Ah oh. oh. Okay, it's still intact. Oh, thank goodness for that. My daily moment of stupidity is done and I've finally surpassed Koori in idiocy, so he's truly ready to leave now. I think the lesson that we've learnt is it's time to go to the pub. Look at that smug face, honestly. <laughs> What's that, like karma or something? Right, I'll put this back. Oh, I think Jordan left that in there from the tree. <sighs> so as it's Koori's last day, I think I'm gonna take him down the pub now. See you over there. Be honest with Jordan. Oh, okay. I might have also crashed the drone about five minutes before you into the same tree. Really? In the same spot near enough. No way. Yeah. But I recovered it and I was waiting because I was hoping that lady was going to tell you. I can't believe you had such a smug face after I yeah. crashed it. You hypocrite. <laughs> you look like you've pooped your pants. I might well have done. Oh, it's too much excitement today. You did say earlier he was incontinent. Or was it incompetent? I can't remember. Both could involve poop. Welcome to the pub. Have you got Fosters? Mm. It's actually a lager shandy. Okay. A I'm drink saying. of wusses, but I'm driving, so... You're one step away from a Cronenberg 1664. Well, you know, that's And that's one step level. away from me checking on Lisa and making sure she's all right. Right, Corey, so I've got a present for you. Ah, oh, that's very sweet. I've got a leaving present for you. Oh, it's, not to cry. It's, um, it's, it's, not, it's not for you exactly, it's sort of for you to look after. Oh. Um, Aye. Thank so, you. Is there a YouTube channel inside of here? So th is there, there, is, the there is a pre-made YouTube channel with 100,000 subscribers Sick. hidden within. Can I still get a gold one when you get your diamond one or whatever one is next? Nice. You know, I feel like I've technically been part of it. This video will probably be the one to make you blow up. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's so nice. So this is... Thank you so much. Should oh, one sec, pad thai. This is for you to look after until uh, you get one of your own for your own channel. That is so kind, honestly. This is in better condition so, than yours as well. This, this hasn't got the, the dent. This is the pristine brand new one. Yeah. I've got the dented one. Ah. Uh, Congratulations on your subscriber milestone. That, that means a lot. Thanks, man. Wow. You've been a big part of it. What a journey. Do you know what else means a lot? Plethora. That does mean a lot. Yeah. It means no, a lot to me, too. Thank you. I'll give you a hug later when the camera's off. Oh. You don't have to do that. Let's see when it was. It was November. Corey's first day. It was the 17th of November 2020. That was my first day. Good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back. And look who's with me today, Corey, new employee, employee of the day, and soon to be employee of the month and employee of the year. So it's going to be a fun week. Looking forward to it. Yes. You got in touch, and I remember thinking, nah, I'm not interested in a job. I was like, I do not want to be employed. And I was like, okay, maybe this is a sign. I think I should take it. And you know, obviously, it's worked out so well for you. So I'm so glad that you did it. <laughs> Let's get our pad tight. I've never
never quit a job. I don't think I've ever quit anything like that really, but there's times I've definitely been annoyed. First introduction to YouTube and also being employed. So I've never had someone else take credit for my work before. And I remember it was the chargery job where we did the scooters and I did that three-phase board change. I remember you yeah. was on with something else at the time and you was like off, coming back for a bit, going off, coming back. And I wasn't, wasn't familiar with YouTube either. And you'd turn up with the camera for half an hour, be like, right, this is what we're on with. You know, we've just done this. And I'd be, we? I'm thinking, we? Like, I've just done this on my own. On Instagram and stuff, it was like this beautiful board change. I don't think it was I, it might have been we or I have done stay. And I'm thinking, I did that and I did that on my own or like whatever but um it's the royal week Corey. yeah but now I realize yeah when you're employed that it doesn't bother me in the slightest bit now at all but it's just because it's the first time yeah I just remember it being such an adjustment I can tell you actually one of my favorite moments was doing the night shifts with you This looks like it's all my mess, but believe it, it is, or not, you're the messy pup. It's 50-50 today, we are both mucky pups today. I'd left my house at quarter to six, and I didn't get back in until like half one or something. And uh, I just remember like this screwdriver, this Weira screwdriver, and I was genuinely so triggered. I love Weira, like they're a great brand, but I was so triggered by this screwdriver because I was so tired, I was like, Stupid piece of junk. Call like, oh, yourself a screwdriver. Yeah, yeah call yourself a screwdriver. This screwdriver is possibly the worst screwdriver. Yeah, I feel like actually. Yeah, that was a long day. That was a long day, but days like that were actually the most fun. What was your best and worst moments of hiring me? Start with best. Just OCD attention to detail, like finding someone who has the same or even higher level of OCD about neatness than me was like so key. Because you were my first electrician employee, That's like I'd only start. ever had subbies working for me before. I felt like the, you know, the whole reputation of the company was kind of it would live or die by this person who I was was hiring. So when I saw some of your super neat boards and how you were like properly obsessed with detail like me, it just it was brilliant. You know? And the worst thing? Where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were just completely unmanageable. Like, How? That's what I realised over time. Like, you've always got your way of doing things and you want to do it your way and you will find a way to do it your way, even if you've been told to do it a different way. And there'll always be an excuse as to why that sounds really convincing. Like, this is what I've learned about you over the last couple yeah. of years is that you're capable of sort of like coming up with these amazingly elaborate stories that are very convincing about why it wasn't your fault or why you had to do it a certain way. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's better if the cable goes out of slant because over every install, you're saving 20% copper, which is going to be a massive saving turnover. That is, that, yeah, that is a perfect example of, of how convincing you can be. So a very good electrician, but very difficult to, um, to employ. Very good electrician, very bad employee, I would say, really. Like, but you've survived this long, which is amazing, really. Like, there was which is so, exactly why. So many moments where I thought, this is it. He's not going to last much longer. Okay, what is your funniest moment? I think for me, it's just like, you'd be out on a job and, you know, I'd be in the office or whatever. And then end of the day, the footage would come through and I'd watch it and it would be like, oh my goodness. You know, <laughs> I'd just be wagging myself watching in the office, watching what you've been up to. Like the, the one where... Um, it was like an electrician instructor who'd like done all the wiring. Oh, and you, yeah. Uh, there was this moment when you were under the, like under, on the kitchen floor. Oh, yeah. And you were like... It looks like I mean, Bob Marley's rolled that, rolled that joint. And it was just like a stream of one-liners that just had me rolling around on the floor <laughs> laughing. The one-liners are still there. They just have to be cut quite often, unfortunately. Maybe we should do an uncut, unpolitically correct one-liner competition. <laughs> For, uh, for the YouTube. Corey, videos. uncut. If you'd like to see a behind the scenes montage of all the crazy one liner and mad, accidents, mad moments, falling off accidents ladders, accidents and crashing things, electric shocks, crashing drones, crashing vans, cutting pipes, <laughs> electric shocks, <laughs> all of that in a montage, hit the join button next to subscribe, join up as a channel member, and we'll post a special behind the scenes video just for our channel members. So this is a chance that the audience have all been waiting for, Corey. What are you doing? Why are you leaving? What have you decided to do with your life? I've decided to become a men's health model. Um, <laughs> comments. 
in the descript in your videos have just boosted my confidence so much. I'm going to be a plus size model for ASOS. Um, modeling anything from maternity wear, because this is the thing. People who want to do maternity modeling, they're only good for nine months, and even then, not all of that period. Whereas I can keep a nice round <laughs> belly all year round. A little Maybe bit hairy. Johnny no neck will be a stunt double. <laughs> A little bit hairy, but you know what? Sometimes that sells better. So I'm thinking that for a little bit, I'll be the before photo for men's health and they'll just crop people's faces onto it um, or maternity wear. But that fails, then I'm gonna start my own electrical business. Because here's the thing, I love doing electrical work. I love being an electrician. I just don't like being told when I can and can't go on holiday <laughs> or when I can't go to you wasps. I don't like being told when I can't go to Hawaii. So, I'm starting my own business, starting my own YouTube channel. It's called Artisana Electrics. <laughs> so however artisan they are, we're Artisanera Electrics. What is it, five star electric? Six star electricians. Um, no, not really, it's called Oi Electrical. And that is, you have to go and watch the video to see why it's called that and stuff. Um, the link to it is. Um, yeah, so I'm starting my own business, starting my own channel, and uh, I've got some cool projects lined up. So I'm just gonna try and take on whatever interesting stuff I can, basically. I'm gonna take on, obviously, the bits and pieces that you have to do to pay the bills, because um, unfortunately I do still have bills to pay. My arm will swell up. You might think I'm being a baby. When my arm swells up, then you'll see why. I'm so worried about these wasps landing on my legs and crawling around. Even though I swell up, you <laughs> saw no, you, me. No, sorry, you sent Luke into the loft. I was up there with him. <laughs> Watch the video. Who was like, filming? Max wasn't Na filming. Nathan put the clip. No, he wasn't. Nathan I was filming. Nathan put the clip of, of Luke screaming in the loft with the wasps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm starting my own channel. I'm taking on some of these interesting jobs that for a big business are just not financially viable to take on, let's face it. Like for me to... I'm going to Hawaii to work on an apprentice rate to learn some Hawaiian electrical code to pick up some electrical well, American bits and pieces um, and work with some guys out there and just do a bit of lifestyle vlogging and stuff out there. That for a guy on his own is perfect, but for an electrical business, it just makes no sense. So I understood that completely. And like, I've got some work next month. Well, actually tomorrow I'm going out there. I'm in Norway filming for a bit. So by episode five, six of my channel, it'll start getting interesting because the whole first few episodes are just telling the story of starting up and everything and trying to sort everything out that you need to sort out and starting a business, which is mind boggling as you made clear. Yes, yeah, so much to sort. I'll still be an electrician, still be about the area. Eventually I'd like down to move down towards the South Coast. It's one important question that everyone's wondering though. Yeah. What the heck is that thing on your face? Oh, okay. Um, so here's the thing i watched uh top gun <laughs> and i was like that is sick that is the look for me i'm gonna shave off everything and just keep the uh the mustache and i mean everything on pits i was like i'm just gonna keep the mustache <laughs> and then i filmed a few videos and obviously i didn't see the edits until much later so it's not like i could film one and then change it i filmed like four so i was in deep and then i saw the first edit and i was like oh geez I don't look like Miles Kane. <laughs> if Freddie Mercury and Elvis had a baby, this would be I the love like child. If you let it bush out a bit and go for like the sort of curly. I did last bits, week. I cool. had little curls on the ends, and uh, yeah, my sisters and my mother saw me and absolutely roasted me. Any insult you can imagine to do with a mustache was involved. So for those people that hate me, um, and there are a few in the comments and things. See you later. Good luck with your lives. Um, and for those that want to see more, catch you on the other side. Links are below. Um, in fact, I can tell you the job you bought me that, the trunking race with uh, Oscar. Yeah. Ruben is the only one. Corey says, I never have lunch on jobs and there's always more for empty food wrappers than there are electrical waste. Let me tell you something, Ruben, vans. on his last day, the cheeky boy, because he knows I hate it when he does it, he left that in there. I've not, I don't even like Fanta Watch. So that's it guys, end of an era. What a crazy couple of years it's been. Corey, a true character in all his wonderful ways. 
has been a great thing for our company and going to be sad to see him go. So Corey, to you, really wish you all the best with everything that you had got planned mate. I'm sure it's going to be epic and for all of our subscribers, definitely head to the link below and check out Corey's first video on his new channel which is going to be launching straight after this video. So head over there, give him a subscribe and see what he's going to be getting up to over the weeks and months to come. But I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you have. And we are going to be posting way more content on here, so don't worry, the channel is not ending. You're going to have to put up with a bit more of me though, and of course all the usual guys, John, Lee, Luke and Ruben, will still be pumping out loads of great content for you guys. So stay tuned for the next video, and we'll see you soon. That's better. So that's it. It's been so good, and uh, Genuinely, I'm so grateful as well to the company, to Jordan, to you guys for being so kind, you know, being so supportive as well of my next step. Obviously, I'm very sad to leave. It's been a lot of fun and it's been such a cool opportunity just being able to work with friends and turn out quality work and stuff. But the saying goes, each new, well, that's not really long enough to do anything with. Each new, <laughs> each new beginning is some other beginning's end. So this is the end of Artisan Electrics. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't actually mean that. I didn't actually mean that. Uh, it's the end of my time employed for now as I'll send lecture. never say never. You'll probably find me in a cardboard box somewhere near Piccadilly Circus. Um, and hopefully John will take me back for another job. But like I say, thank you so much to everybody in our Sound Electrics in the office and also all of you viewers here. Take care. You've got four weeks. No, I'm joking. I already let him know four weeks ago. It's today. Oh, um, obviously, I know you're quite tight on budget, so there's your Wagos I borrowed. Um, they're fresh out of the washing machine. Thank goodness, I would be docking your pay if you didn't get those. Pay. There's your Vankies, um, tank full of fuel. I did siphon some of it off to mine, but the rest should be in there. No. Corey!